Hello and welcome to Only Connect. And this is a semi-final. It's here that medals become a genuine possibility. Or they would if we actually gave out any medals, which we don't. But look on the bright side, it's only since Series 3 that we've given them chairs. But we do give them respect because it's not easy to get this far on Only Connect. And I say that as the host. For a contestant, it's almost impossible. Congratulations then on a return visit for, on my right, Andrew Lyman, a keen supporter of Yorkshire Cricket Club, who likes listening to the music of Bob Dylan. Jane Tether, an information design consultant and gardening enthusiast, who's a big fan of Middlesex cricket team. And their captain, Dave Tilly, a crossword compiler with a passion for Batman and the Avengers. They love nothing better than completing the listener crossword. They are the listeners. Dave, you beat the Steel City Singers and the Rowers to win a place in the semi-final. Have there been any surprises along the way? I think the fact that we're here is the big, <laughs> biggest surprise. <laughs> um, that we've, we've enjoyed it. It's been, uh, it's been fun. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're just genuinely surprised to be here. Well, I hope the fun doesn't grind to a terrifying halt this evening. You will be facing, on my left, Simon Belcher, an amateur filmmaker with an interest in family history. Debbie Chalice, an educational events organiser for UCL who enjoys 19th century ghost stories. And their captain, Will Howells, a freelance writer and digital media manager who's fanatical about Doctor Who. United by an interest in all things historical, they are the antiquarians. You defeated the social networkers in your quarterfinal. How did you find that match? We thought it was actually really quite hard, so we're, we're hoping for easier questions in the semi-final. Do you have any specific tactics for the semi-final? We're, um, we're going to think about everything very carefully. We're going to confer a lot as a team. And if the worst comes to the worst, we're going to run for the exit. Excellent. Well, let's give you something to think about. We'll kick off with round one, as is only traditional. This is where I just want to know the connections between four clues or fewer if you only need fewer. Listeners won the toss and are going first. Please select your first hieroglyph of the semi-final. Twisted flux, please. OK, you're going to get up to four clues. What is the connection? Your time starts now. Yeah, that's in the Hermitage St Petersburg. Sorry? It's in the Hermitage St Petersburg. Right. Okay. Next one, please. Yes. A hunt, Jane. It's the Hermitage in St Petersburg. What do you think that second clue has got to do with the Hermitage in St Petersburg? I think that painting's in it. I'm afraid that is not the correct answer, so I'm going to show the next two clues to the antiquarians as a possible bonus point available. Based on Jules Vermeer trophy, we're going to say they were stolen. What I'll say is that if Vermeer's The Concert is in the Hermitage at St Petersburg, then the police should go and get it, <laughs> because these are things that have all been stolen and never seen since. Jules Rimet trophy, I think, was stolen once and found, but then stolen again. The Amber Room, looted by the Nazis, uh, never traced again. Vermeer's The Concert, still missing, worth about $200 million. And The Little Mermaid's head, its original head, was sawn off and never recovered. So, well done for a bonus point. Please pick your own question. The Eye of Horus, please. Eye of Horus, first clue coming up now. Next. He was General Grant. Yeah. yeah. General, Didn't he have a nickname as well, though? Um, the Storm. I, the Storm. Yeah, maybe. Next. No, no, no. Russell. Uh, Russell. Uh, the T doesn't stand for anything in Russell T Davis. Does the S stand for anything in the Ulysses S? I don't know. I, I think that's worth a pun. Yeah. Should we on. go for it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we think um, based on Russell. Uh, off of Doctor Who, that the uh, middle initials or the first initial don't actually stand for anything. They are people whose names contain initials that do not stand for anything. Harry S. Truman would have been the last one. That's a diplomatic thing. It was an S, didn't want to offend either grandfather, so they just made it S. Russell T. Davis, to distinguish himself from, there was another Russell Davis, I think, uh, Ulysses S. Grant. That was a clerical error in his West Point nomination. They put the S in there. And Norman Schwarzkopf, I think, was born with the name Herbert, but had it removed from his birth certificate. So initials that stand for nothing. Well done. Back to you, listeners, to pick a question. Two reads, please. Two reads. What is the connection here? Your time starts now. Next 
one, please? Five seconds. Another one, please. No, I'm afraid you're out of time. Possible bonus for you, antiquarians? Yeah, exactly. All you need is love. They're Beatles titles in Spanish. They are the titles of Beatles songs in Spanish, here, mm. there and everywhere. When I have 64 years... All What's the next one? Love. All you need is love and... and hello, and goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Beatles song titles in Spanish. Very well spotted there, antiquarians. Your reward is another question. The horned viper, please. Horned viper. It's the music <laughs> question. What is the connection between these pieces of music? First one coming in now. Can you something? Yeah. yeah. Next. Like some, some Spanish flea, is it? Next. I feel it when you're with me. It happens when you kiss me. That rare and like gentle feeling. Ten seconds. Next. Yeah. That's the flight of the bumblebee. The flight of the bumblebee. Spanish flea, insects. Yeah. Insects, yeah, I go. Insects. The connection is insects. You did hear the flight of the bumblebee. The first one might have sounded a bit like it. It's Vaughan Williams' The Wasps. Similar principle, music that sounds like the insect Spanish flea and love is like a butterfly was the third one. Insects is the connection. Very well done. Back to you now, listeners, to pick a question. Water, please. Water. OK, it's about time you got some points, so I hope it happens here. So do we. First clue coming up now. It is. Next one, please. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's some sort of solvent that they use for uh, treating them. Nitroglycerin, don't I? There's something like that. Next one. Next one. Next one, please. Next one. 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 Next They're the original users for drugs. That is what they are. The original users for street drugs. Yeah, yeah. Angina treatment, do you know what that is? Uh, GHB. It's it, uh, poppers. A poppers, uh, amyl yeah. nitrate, yes. Uh, graffiti remover is GBL. Cattle worming treatment, BZP. I've never heard of that one. You'd think with my habit. <laughs> and uh, ketamine yeah. is the horse tranquilizer. Misused social drugs, that's their proper use. So you're off the blocks with a point. Well done. Back to the antiquarians for the final question. Lion. And uh, these are going to be picture clues, of course, because we haven't had those yet. First one coming up now. That is an eclipse, maybe? It looks like a uh, conjunction of some kind. Okay, next. That's oh, a... a Siamese... No, it's a... It's a hairless. Yeah. yeah, it's a hairless cat. So um, OK, is that from the Egyptian cat. Egyptian. OK, next. Some kind of sarcophagus. Mm -hmm. Egypt? No, no it's, it's not an Egyptian tomb, it's a Christian church. Mm -hmm. it looks yeah. Any particular? Uh, next. <clears throat> Ten seconds. Gypsy? That's a caravan. Is it to do with. Oh, it's fortune telling. It's fortune telling. Yeah. Fortune telling. Oh, yes. <laughs> what do you think that third clue yeah. is? Uh, someone who got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a loose connection. <laughs> it's not fortune telling, so there's a possible bonus for the listeners. Um, inventions, cat's eyes mainly. And cat's eyes connects with the others. How? The other thing I was thinking of Turkey. I've just suddenly realised it might be Turkey because of a Turkish bath and the, Tur the cat's a Turkish van. I think. Fascinating. So wrong. <laughs> I don't know what the cat is. The cat is a sphinx. Not spelt like the normal sphinx. It is spelt S-P-H-Y-N-X. That's a clue. These are all things which can be spelt with no vowels, only a Y. You're looking at a syzygy. Sphinx, a crypt, not so much a Turkish bath as a crypt, and a gypsy, G-Y-P-S-Y. No vowels there, just Ys. 
So, we're up to the end of round one, and looking at the scores, the listeners have got one point, but the antiquarians are ahead with five. <laughs> round two is about sequences. Here, the teams must work out their connections, but tell me not what those connections are, but what the fourth in the sequence would be. Listeners, you'll be kicking it off again. Uh, two reads, please. OK, what is the fourth in this sequence? The first coming up now. Next one, please. Is it two fluid ounces, one half, one half, one half, one half, two half, two one half, one half, one half, one half, one half, Three seconds. No. No. Another bonus chance for you, antiquarians. We think it might be 2t equals 1s. You are right about that. Why is that? It's 2 farthings equals 1 halfpenny, 2 halfpennies equals 1 penny, 3 pence equals a 1 threepence, threepence, that's the word, and 2 threepence equals 1 sixpence. You are absolutely right. Pre-decimal coinage was the link, and that's what it was. 2t equals 1s. The right answer for the bonus. And your turn to pick a question. We will have the Eye of Horus, please. All right, the Eye of Horus. What's fourth in this sequence? Time starts now. The figures is the extra um, uh, zodiacal sign. It's the 13th oh, zodiacal okay. sign. Okay. Next. So that's yes. a 12th. It's the 11th is Scorpio. Order. And before Scorpio, <coughs> it's, it's uh, Libra. Le Leo. <laughs> no, Leo's August. Uh, Isn't it Leo, Virgo, Libra, yeah. Libra. Should we go for Libra if you're talking yeah. backwards? Libra. I'm afraid that's not the answer I'm looking for. I'm going to show the third in the sequence to the listeners and see if you can tell me what's fourth for a possible bonus. It's probably Aquarius, isn't it? Are they fire signs or the animal signs? No, 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 Aquarius. This isn't a coffee morning. Do you have an answer? The Aquarius. Aquarius is the right answer. Can you explain why? <coughs> They're the, um... The constellations that the uh, zodiac signs are based on in order. Yes, it's constellations on the ecliptic in the order in which the sun moves through them. And next, after Capricornus, would be Aquarius. You got the bonus point, so well done. And you may now pick your own question. Twisted flux, please. Twisted flux. First in a sequence coming up. What's fourth? Time starts now. Next one, please. Diary of a nobody. No, but it's, 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 a, it's a connection, it's not a, sorry, it's a sequence. Yeah. Next one, please. Oh, um, Archbishop of Canterbury. It would be, um, Cosmo Languis. Is it Cogan? Cogan, Donald Cogan. Donald Cogan. Was it before? Ten Fisher. seconds. Fisher, Jeffrey Fisher. Jeffrey Fisher. Jeffrey Fisher. Jeffrey Fisher. Jeffrey Fisher is the right answer. Why is that? Um, holders of the Archbishop of Canterbury post. You see, it's interesting, I heard you muttering that, and that's not why. Oh. Because why would there be a nobody at point two? Just assume there was nobody at the coronation. Oh, at the coronations. That's right, archbishops at coronations, specifically who put the crown on the monarch's head. That's why we've got a nobody. Nobody crowned Edward VIII because he abdicated. Would have been Cosmo Lang. He crowned George VI instead. And the most recent Geoffrey Fisher crowned Elizabeth II, of course. So, well done there. And back to the antiquarians for a question. Lion. Lion. First in a sequence coming up. You'll be seeing images here. The first one's coming up now. Next. That's Russia. Next. Um, a, a red squiggly bit round the <laughs> green bit in the middle of the first and third pictures. <laughs> Is that a way of saying you don't know? It, it's, it's possibly, yes. <laughs>
<laughs> is there any particular thing you'd expect to see represented in the fourth picture? No. No, I thought not. Right, possible bonus for you listeners? Andy, go ahead. India. Oh, no, an outline of the map of India. It isn't an outline of the map of India. Why do you think it would be? Uh, um, increasing population. Ah, no. What it is, is increasing coastlines. You're oh. looking at the Philippines, then Russia, then Indonesia, but the one with the longest coastline would be Canada. Canada. Canada would be the fourth answer. So no points there. Listeners, please pick a question. Horned Viper, please. All right. First in a sequence coming up. What's fourth? Here's the first one. Next one, please. Ladies, Papa Trump. Portage Gay Letters. Why does that sound like that? Yes, <laughs> I don't think it'd be that easy. No, no, no. no. Next one, please. Nine is etiquette. It's still nine letters in etiquette. Is it just going to be a ten letter Ten word? seconds. A ten letter word in a second. This is the semi final. Yeah, Five yeah. seconds. What do you answer? Is em equals embroidery. That's not the answer. No. And I'm going to go over to the antiquarians for a possible bonus. We, we're pretty sure it's ten equals and maybe a word with ten letters in, but other than that, we don't know. That answer is even less impressive. At least they came up with a ten-letter word. <laughs> yes, now, you see, it would be a ten-letter word, but that's why I hinted you this is the semi-final before you gave me the answer. There's another thing that these words have in common, apart from the number of letters in them, they can all be typed using only the top row on a typewriter, oh, the QWERTY row. So what I wanted to know was a ten-letter word using those keys. Typewriter, for example, yeah. there are others, but yes, yes, more specific than you gave me. You didn't give me a word at all, which is at this stage shocking. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'll forgive you just long enough to give you the last question, which is water. First clue coming up, what's fourth in the sequence? Here's the first. Nigel Slater. <laughs> Nigel Slater would be so happy to hear you say that. <laughs> it absolutely is not him. Possible bonus for you, listeners. Raymond Blanc. Not him either, but it's a better guess. Why would you think that? Michelin stars. It is the order of the chefs with the most Michelin stars, but the top one would be Jules Robuchon. Well, there you go. Of course, they can only get three Michelin stars per restaurant, yeah. but with the number of restaurants, they can have more. Nigel Slater, tragically, so far, has none. <laughs> the one with the most is Joel Robuchon. So you guessed better, but still no bonus, meaning at the end of round two, the listeners are up to four points, but the antiquarians are ahead with six. <laughs> Time for the connecting walls. Very hard semi-final connecting walls, but if you want to have a go... It's going to go live at the same time online now. Meanwhile, antiquarians, it will be your turn to go first. Please choose lion or water. Water, please. OK, you have got two and a half minutes to solve the water wall starting now. Starbucks, a character in um, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, Beakers in the Muppets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Long John Silver's in Doyle. Treasure Island. Is that, is, is, that's not uh, Popeye, Popeye Doyle's uh, Ripley's Ripley's a, Ripley's a Popeye yeah, character. Flask, Chalice and Kylox are drinking cups. It's finding another one. Uh, uh, Maisa, maybe? Maybe Beaker? Or... Yeah. Uh, Queek Quake is in... Um, uh, Tribe uh, tri tri of Beaker. Maybe Dick, isn't it? Tribe of Cups of Beaker. Uh, no. Yeah. Ahab, yeah. Ahab and Queek Quake are in Maybe Dick. Yeah. Um, he has an Ishmael. And um, uh, Ahab, Queek Quake, Ishmael and Maisa, or maybe Starbucks in that, maybe? Just or Popeye that, Doyle, maybe. Have a think about the universe. That seems more like Popeye. Popeye. That could be a red herring or something. I tried to pass cash. Long John Silver, Treasure Island, obviously. Is it pirates? Is it, yeah. Any Popeye Doyle pirates? Or, um, cold. What's cold? Cold finger? Is that a dessert? Oh, I don't know what cold finger is from. I don't know. Um, there's a water. 
Yeah, it's not, Starbuck isn't going to be the coffee shop because it doesn't have an S. Um, Ahab, Kukuk, <laughs> Ishmael, and Flask keeping up. Oh, okay. Right. So, okay. Uh, we, we Chalice, to the... Kylix, Beaker, and Mazer, maybe? We tried I that one, we tried okay. that one. Just try Kayak with that, and I don't know what that is. Okay. There we go. Okay. Right. Uh, we a burette and a condenser are used in chemistry, as is yes. a beaker. And probably a cold finger. <laughs> what does it so we're left with Long John Silver, Wimpy, Wimpy Popeye Doll, and Starbuck. They're not, they're not <coughs> got a minute they're, they're they're all characters, there. characters. Oh, oh, Wimpy is also a restaurant, but a character Starbuck. It's Starbucks. Popeyes oh, is Popeyes. Oh, is it Popeye? Long John's. There's shop. There's are they there. Ca- restaurant chains. Restaurant chains that are also cartoon characters. They've all got yeah. restaurant chains named yeah, after them. Yeah, they could do. Try, try just to check that. We think Starbuck. Complete the group. We think Starbuck. You've solved the wall. Very well done. Four points for doing that. Let's try and get some points for the connections. Ishmael, Flask, Ahab, Queequeg. Uh, we think they're all characters in Moby Dick. They are the characters from Moby Dick. You struggled with Flask. He's the third mate. Slightly more obscure character. Well done. Mazer, Chalice, Quich, Kylix. It's a liquid container. No, liquid containers. Kylix is a great drinking cup. A drinking, uh, drinking cup. Cup. vessels. A drinking vessels. Exactly so. Well done. Cold finger, beaker, burette, condenser. They're all used in chemistry. They're chemical equipment in labs. I'll take it. I mean, they're really glassware in labs. That's the horror, that it's in the same group as drinking vessels. <laughs> yes, laboratory equipment. And Starbuck, Popeye Doyle, Wimpy, Long John Silver. We think um, chains, uh, maybe restaurant chains, cafe chains, are named after them, food and drink chains. That's exactly it. They are characters who have lent their name to fast food chains. And the trick there is that Starbuck is also in Moby Dick. But the Starbucks chain named after him, Popeye Doyle, not the cartoon character. It's a character from the French Connection. So very well done. Very tough wall, but you've got all four points for the groups, four more points for the connections, and the bonus two points for getting it all correct. That is a maximum of ten. Time to bring back the listeners to see what they can do with the connecting wall. Different wall, of course, 16 new clues, same basic principle. So, listeners, you've got two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall. Your clues are coming up now. Uh, Gallagate, Brummy, Shed, Rufus and Gordius. Uh, crossroads, that is. They certainly are. Right, we've got... Harold uh, Herbert. Wait a minute, hold on. Gallagate is in Newcastle. What name is it? Yes. Bolingbrook, Lackland, Beauclerk and Herbert. Right, nicknames of kings. That's OK. So, Holt End is at Aston Villa. Oh, people from... No, Lawrence is from Leeds and Moonrakes to from Swindon. That'll do. Nice. And there ends in football grounds. That's correct. Wow. No time wasted. Marvellous. <laughs> you must have a train to catch. <laughs> Very well done. You get the four points for the groups that you found. Let's see if you can get the connection points. Gordius, Brummy, Shed, Rufus. Do you know this? They are Guardian crossword compilers. Do you know, I thought you might get that one. Do you ever do that crossword or only the listener? Jane's what? husband is a setter. But, but he's not up on there. Wow! Well, that's fascinating. I want to gossip about that, but yeah. now I'm remembering that we're actually making a TV show. They are Guardian crossword compilers. And your husband could have been a red herring. It wasn't. <laughs> Next group, Harefoot, Beauclerk, Lackland, Bolingbrook. Um, um, they're uh, nicknames, nicknames or associated with kings. You've got Howell Herefoot. Was it Henry Bolingbroke, Richard um, Beauclerk, and John um, Lackland? I don't think John was Lackland, anyway. <laughs> King John King, was Lackland. King They're Lackland. nicknames for English kings. It's, uh, it's Henry Beauclerk. That's uh, King Henry I. Very well done. Next group, Moonraker, Scouser, Loina, Mackham. Nicknames for people from different parts of the, the country. That's right. Do you know what the actual name is for something like that? A something and him. <laughs> well, yes, you're getting there. It's a demonym. A demonym. For, for someone from a particular place. Do you know which places those are? Moonrakers from Wiltshire. Well, Swindon. Swindon. Scousers are from Depool. Loiners are from Leeds. And Mackhams are Sunderland. are Sunderland, not Newcastle. That is absolutely correct. Demonyms, well done. And the last one. Copland, Gallagate, Holt End, The Shelf. The ends of football grounds. Stands at football grounds. Stands at football grounds. They're stands at football grounds. Yeah. Do you want to tell me which ones? Holt End oh. is Hillsborough. Oh, Holt End no. is Villa Park. Villa Park. Villa Park. Gallagate Gallagate is, Aston Villa. Gallagate yeah. Gallagate is Newcastle. Newcastle. The Shelf. Was oh, that QPR? That's the only one I know. I'm supposed to support QPR, although I haven't seen a match for 400 years. Loftus Road. No, the 
the shelf is at White Hart Lane. Once Ooh. QPR's bitter rivals. Mm -hmm. Those were the glory days. Mm -hmm. And? Copeland. Copeland, I don't know. It's Ibrox, Glasgow Rangers. Yeah. Oh. Stands at Football Stadia. Still very well done. You found all four <coughs> groups. You've got all four connections. That is the maximum of ten points. Let's see what that does to the overall scores. The listeners have got 14 points, but the antiquarians are ahead with 16. That means it is very close, and the place in the final will be decided by missing vowels. You know how this works now, teams. I want to know what the names, phrases and sayings are, even though the vowels are missing. Fingers on buzzers. The first category are all operas that premiered in Paris. Antiquarians. Don Pasquale. Correct. Listeners. Peleas en Melisande. Correct. Too long. This is Les Troyes. Next clue. Listeners. Lacme. Correct. Next category wartime poster slogans. Listeners. Your country needs you. Correct. Listeners. Careless talk costs lives. Correct. Listeners. Is your journey really necessary? Correct. Antiquarians. Dig for victory. Correct. Next category, female protagonists in literature. Listeners. Fanny Price. From Mansfield Park. Correct. Listeners. Love a lie. That is not the right answer. I'm afraid you lose a point. Possible bonus. Antiquarians. No. Too long, I'm afraid you missed the extra L. Lorelei Lee from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Next clue. A more obscure one. Antoinette Cosway from the Wise Largasso C. Next clue. Antiquarians. Eliza Doolittle. From Pygmalion. Correct. Next category. Metric units and what they measure. Listeners. Hertz, unit of frequency. I'm afraid that is not the right answer. There's a possible... There is no bonus chance because that is the end of the quiz. Oh, listeners, if that D had been a T, but no, it's Hertz and frequency. Wrong by one consonant, and that means that at the end of this semi-final, the listeners have got 18 points, but the antiquarians win it with 19. Well done, antiquarians. You're through to the final. Listeners, brilliant. A very close match. It could easily have been either of you. Very sorry to see you go, but you will be back for the third-place playoffs, which many say is the most important one we've got. Please join me next time for another round of the quiz that's more confusing than the route to the studio from the bar. I swear they keep adding corners. Good night. And you'll have to wait a fortnight to find out who they'll meet in the final. Next week at half past eight, we've an Only Connect Children in Need special. Next this evening, though, our justice programmes continue with the tale of the Shankill Butchers in just a few moments. And then at ten, Pauline Quirk stars in our murderous drama, The Sculptress. Thank you.